Um, I think increasingly globally and, and certainly domestically, US soccer and, and the NSCAA, um, it's a little bit more uh, candidate centric, if you will, to the point where we don't even refer to people on our courses as instructors and candidates. We actually refer to us all as coaches and there are staff coaches and coaches. Um, I think it's increasingly a common idea that it's presumptuous for any of us, especially in American coach education, to assume that we know what is best for the coach um, because we aren't in his or her environment. Um, we obviously have an incredible diversity of coaches coming, uh, ethnic by, uh, backgrounds, um, language skills, socioeconomic opportunities for their players, and then everybody coming to courses from professional coaches down to grassroots. So I think what we're really looking at is giving good information, good support, and then really working with the coach to try to put it into his or her context so they can apply this knowledge um, in a logical and useful way, as opposed to be given education, which really doesn't help them in their environment. Well, and I feel like sometimes with education, the educators have a lot of pressure put on them to, you know, make me learn. I'm, I'm the coach, can make me learn. You know, I come to the course for a couple of days and I expect you to do all that you can to help me. And something that's not talked about is what I have to do. How do I get prepared to come and be ready to learn and share and have all these things happen over the course of five days? So what do you think? I'm going to ask a couple of questions on this topic, but what do you think are the biggest mistakes coaches make when they go to a coach education course? Well, I think, I think you hit on a very common one. That is, we've come now, save the world, give us the silver bullet, give us the answer. Um, and I still think there are many coaches that come with that expectation. And so they're looking for you to do everything for them. Um, but as the coaches get a little bit younger, um, certainly relative to some of our staff, but more technologically savvy, more exposed to the global game, I think they come with a greater experience set. And so I find that increasingly they're more willing to share. Um, and they're much, they get very excited pretty quickly, even if they came with the preconceived notion that we were going to do everything for them. They get pretty excited if, if they're empowered to give their opinions, to show what they know, to, to do their best. So I think, um, I think increasingly that, that aspect's getting better. Um, I would say that if people come to coaching courses, hopefully the content's halfway decent, hopefully the instructors are decent. Um, but again, to your point, the candidate has to come or the, the coach has to come with a real open mind and also be willing to say, I'm gonna take this bit, but I'm actually gonna ignore this bit or, or put this bit in a, in a folder for later. Um, and I think we have increasingly more discerning um, and experience people coming in. And so I think overall the learning experiences are getting better and better. Ian, do you have, um, as an educator, do you have a hard time or do you find it difficult to break down some of the habits, behaviors, and experiences or traditions that come into the classroom with some of these candidates as they begin a coaching education journey? Yeah, th certainly we've sort of got a, a, a Northern European, Western European educational traditional model. You know, there's somebody at the front of the classroom, there's somebody at the front of the field session, and then everybody else is, is pretty much cannon fodder absorbing. And so many of our coaches still come expecting that physical environment where there's a series of desks and they're lined up. And what we're doing a lot more in the classroom is we're getting people up in front, we're having them collaborate in groups, we're having roundtable sessions. The instructor is not necessarily at the front of the classroom. So it's more of a facilitation type environment. And um, I would argue that, that sometimes it's probably some of our slightly older candidates that struggle with that environment. Um, so the icebreakers, you know, everybody feels a bit weird about an icebreaker, but most of the time when somebody's done it, they generally like it. Um, I do find that increasingly some of our younger coaches, uh, male and female, are actually the dominant individuals when we go into group sessions, group work, because there's a certain vitality to them and they have more experience of a, uh, of a blended educational experience as opposed to a more traditional, you know, uh, like I say, Northern European lecture style environment.